Hey, what's going on, Rattler? So here in Northern California, there are some snake species here that are found here and nowhere else on Earth, and they are some of the most beautiful snakes. Well, you know, I'm just gonna say it. They're the most beautiful snakes in the world, at least to me. So we're gonna go to a couple of top secret spots with Brian Gundy, and of course, Brian Cusco is with me, and we are gonna try to find one of the species of snakes up here that I just love finding when I'm up here. We're gonna go out and try to find the critically endangered San Francisco garter snake, as well as a bunch of other cool snakes and lizards that can be found in this part of Northern California. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, guys, so it's bright and early in the morning here. We're gonna head out to a top secret spot that Brian Gundy knows about, but uh, we're gonna start our Northern California herping adventure there, and hopefully we're gonna find one of the boa species that exists in this part of Northern California. Do it, Brian. Oh, no. Every time I go herping, I rip a hole in my pants. Oh, and right in the crotch. I think you got a theme going. I do. So here in the hills around San Francisco, what we're herping in here looks like it used to be an old hippie commune. <laughs> Long-haired freaks. I have a very good feeling about this board. Rubber bullet! Oh, dude, <laughs> shut up! Oh. We haven't been here for more than two minutes yet. <laughs> Look at that. He had already. You now, know, you, Brian? You, had you tell me you flipped that board already? And you, you I did not. I did not. I am just that good of a herper. <laughs> Look at that beauty. That's the head, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, one with the, just, the one with the eyes are the yeah. two heads. <laughs> Isn't that just the most interesting Man. thing? Man. How awesome is this? So guys, we haven't even been here for two minutes and look at this. We found our first rubber boa. So north of Mexico, there are only two species of boas. There's this one and there's the rosy boa, which is also found here in California, but down in the southern deserts. Up here in the north part of California, you're gonna find the rubber boas. And these guys really live up to their name rubber boa because they really look like they're just a piece of rubber. But the interesting thing about rubber boas is that their head and their tail looks almost identical. Sometimes you can't even tell which is the head and which is the tail until you see those eyes. But they do that for a defense mechanism in that if a bird or another predator comes along and wants to make a meal out of them, he'll kind of coil himself in a tight coil, hide his head under those coils and stick that tail up in the air and what that bird is gonna do is it's gonna peck at that tail, thinking that it's pecking at the snake's head. Meanwhile, the head is protected under his coils. And when that predator gives up and leaves, this guy is going to just simply crawl away kind of virtually unscathed because it protected its head using that tail as a almost mimic for its head. These are incredible little snakes and this is about the size of an adult. They do get bigger than this, but this is a big gorgeous rubber boa. And again, we've only been here for two minutes and there's a lot more left to find here. Poison oak, poison oak. No, that's a blackberry. Blackberry, poison oak, blackberry. All right, so Brian just found a little baby garter. Let's check him out. Oh, look at that. So that's a coast garter, or maybe it's a valley garter. We'll have to key him out. And it looks like a coast garter to me. All right, so Dave, rubber boa, Brian, garter. And the other Brian? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Yet. Yet, yet. 
We've just started our day. All right, guys, so we came to this spot to find a rubber boa. We found it within the first two minutes. We flipped a bunch of other stuff. All we found was one rubber boa and one garter snake, which makes this place really awesome. But now we're gonna go to another location and hopefully we are going to find America's most beautiful snake. Uh, looks like Brian finally caught something. Hey, uh, Brian, come help me flip this. <laughs> well, Brian, if you don't find something quick, I'm not gonna have a very good video. Oh, here, I found something. Here. Isn't that something? Yeah, I just found something, yeah. Dave asked me to find something quick, so I did. Say a little something about the Thamnophis wood eye. Would I tell you about it? Probably not. I don't know much about it other than this. Boop. <laughs> you know what else? Boop. <laughs> what about boop? All right, guys, so we've been here for maybe an hour kind of working these pine plantations around here in a very secret spot, and there is exactly what we came to see. That is the San Francisco garter snake. That is one of the most rare snakes in the United States. But in my opinion, it is the most beautiful snake in the United States. So these guys are federally protected, which means that you can't touch it, you can't collect it, obviously, and you just have to do what we're doing here and just see if you can get a shot of him while he's crawling through all these pine needles here. But it is a federal offense to harass this snake here in the wilds of California. But, you know, guys, I've mentioned in other videos about how I feel like we're protecting this animal into extinction by not allowing you know, specific captive breeding initiatives. This snake is as federally and critically endangered as it is, not just because of habitat loss, but because its food source is on the brink of extinction, and that is the red-legged frog. The red-legged frog used to be an extremely common frog here, and it's what these snakes are eating almost exclusively, and as the red-legged frog's numbers continue to decline, so too does the San Francisco garter snake. So this snake has such a small range anyway. It's only found in this one little area here in California, and now they're confined to what little habitat is around me. The rest of their habitat has been destroyed for miles and miles of strawberry fields and other agriculture, and they've been pushed into a tiny little pocket of habitat. And when that happens, well, you get problems with inbreeding, you get problems with genetic diversity, and basically what's happening is that these snakes over time will inbreed with each other to the point where it's really going to cause a lot of detriment to this species out here. So between habitat destruction, their food source completely crashing at this point, and the fact that they're all confined to a small area, this snake is in real danger out here, and you know, to come out to to a spot like this in the middle of the forests in California to actually see these guys in the wild and know that they are still here, man, there really is no other better feeling of being a herper than coming out and seeing a snake like this. So we're just gonna kinda let him go at his own pace. If he wants to sit here, great. If he wants to leave, great. But again, to see these guys here in the wild and to know that there is still viable populations of the San Francisco garter snake here in California, man, it just simply doesn't get any better than this. All right, so we dropped off Brian Gundy and traded him for Travis Johnson here. I don't know if I can hold a, a candle to Brian. I mean, that's 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 big shoes to Those fill. Those but... are some big shoes to fill. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to do a little night cruising, a little road cruising here, and hopefully we're going to find some stuff down these roads here. I hope so. Let's hit it. What do we got? Oh, it's dead. 
No, that's no, alive. It's, alive. You're right. it's a gopher. We'll go nice, for... dude. Look at how he flattens dude, his body dude, out like we, that we to just... grab that heat off that road. Oh, what a nice little gopher. Look at that pattern on him. Woo! So where we are now is an intergrade zone between the Pacific gopher snake and the San Diego gopher snake. This is the most northerly part of the San Diego gopher snake's range. So an intergrade zone is an area where two overlapping species, yes, I'm explaining that to them. It's an area where two ranges of species of snakes overlap, and those two species will intergrade with each other, they'll interbreed with each other in that overlapping part of their range, and that's what we have here. If I had to guess, I would say that this is an intergrade between a San Diego gopher snake and a Pacific gopher snake. He's just an ornery little guy. But man, I'm really glad that we took this time to do some road cruising here. We've been out here for probably two miles. It's just after sunset and already we found this little guy. So he was heading that way and that's the direction I'm going to help him across the road. <laughs> Brian, are you finding anything down there? Yeah, I found an intergrade. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're gonna run him across this really busy road here and down there. All right, there you go, little buddy. All right, got another little snake here. Looks like a gopher to me. Yep. Yeah, yeah it's another little gopher. Nice and bright color. See, but now look at this one though, that one like scream San Diego gopher. Could be an intergrade, but it really looks like a San Diego gopher. Here you, you are, want Brian. To touch the snakey. You want to touch the snakey. Oh, that's smooth and nice. That's one thing that you can tell the difference between a gopher snake and a rattlesnake right away. As soon as you grab it, you know, the, the gopher is much smoother than the rattlesnake. So that's one way you could definitely tell the difference. Just, just grab it. And if it's smooth, then it's a gopher snake. And if it's rough, then it's a rattlesnake. That's and absolutely right. There you and go. That's yeah, the best technique, look, probably. Let it bite you. See if you get a rash. <laughs> right, you know? See it what happens. It still has the keeled scales, but not, you know, not quite uh, as coarse as, you know, a, a rattler would be. Yeah, right. Definitely not. All right. You want to do the honors of uh, walking him across the road? So we. You can do it. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. He do, 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 do. bravely ran away. Bravely ran no, away. away. Oh, you brave go. Gopher. Well, guys, we finally made it to Brian's place. It was a long day, but it was an awesome day. This was a really awesome adventure. Not only did we find rubber boas in the world's most beautiful snake, in my opinion, anyway. But, you know, road cruising at night and finding those gopher snakes was just the icing on the cake. So guys, comment below and let me know what your opinion is on what you think is the most beautiful snake. Not only in North America, but wherever you may live in the world. So, anyway guys, as always, thanks for watching and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet and rattle on. <laughs>